My name is Lars Christian Bergensen. I'm originally from a small town north of the Arctic Circle, actually, in Norway. Um, and right now I'm studying for my MBA uh, with a concentration in finance at the University of Tampa. Uh, I previously did my, my first undergrad back home in Norway for journalism, but I needed a new challenge. That's kind of why I ended up um, applying to a school at the, at the University of Tampa. Um, and I first started doing my sports management degree, uh, my undergrad sports management degree, because I thought, or my, 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 my mindset was that I wanted to work in soccer or in football, as we call it in Europe, of course. Um, but as, as, as I went on, I did realize that I had some other talents, um, more business acumen talents probably. And also when COVID happened and um, I figured that I wanted to challenge myself at a different level than I had before, I kind of ended up doing my, uh, my, uh, my MBA at, at, at that point, yeah. I grew, like I said, I grew up in this small city north of the Pearl Circle uh, that a lot of people have heard about now because um, my team that's in that city, they recently won the Norwegian, they're in the region, um, we call it the Elite Serien. Uh, so they kind of became world famous because it's such a small city and they won it and nobody really knows why <laughs> or knows how. Uh, but I played in their academy for a while um, and I have, a, I have a dad and I have uncles who all play professionally and for the Norwegian, uh, Norwegian national team. That's also what I wanted to do, um, but uh, I wasn't able to. I had to quit soccer a little bit too early because of some 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 uh, heart problems, unfortunately. So that's why I eventually ended up studying journalism first off because I wanted to work as a sports journalist. Uh, but I, I kind of got tired of writing about what other people did instead of doing something myself. So that's kind of why I eventually ended up going to UT and doing sports management, and then eventually also going on to the MBA. But yeah, I played in a Played in a smaller club called Budaglimt uh, for a while, where my uncles and my dad played, and also my grandfather. Um, but when that didn't work out as I hoped, I, I figured I had to make a, a different sporting background. So I started coaching as well. So I coached back home in Norway for a while. And when I came to the U.S., I decided, hey, why not keep coaching? So I went to the uh, UT men's um, soccer head coach. And I told him, hey, I've been coaching in Norway. Um, do you want to take me on to help out around the team? And the first time he kind of just smacked the door in my face and said, I, I don't need anyone. <laughs> but I decided to stay, uh, to persevere with it. And I stopped by his office a couple more times. And eventually he said, okay, I'll take you on. You, you've been there so many times, so why not give it a shot? <laughs> I went through this organization in Norway, in Norway that's called SONOR, which stands for Study Outside of Norway. And they help a lot of a lot of a lot of kids or a lot of you know students in Norway get to the U.S. And when they go through the organization, they can also qualify for certain scholarships. So I contacted them and I said, "Hey, I want to go to a, a good school, um, something that is accredited. I wanted to go to a good sports management program and also preferably with with a good business school if I want to go that down that road at some point. Um, even though that was kind of in the back of my mind, the business part, but I ended up doing it." Um, and I also said, hey, I want to go to some 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 nice weather because I'm from the Arctic Circle. I've never really been around a place where you the sun is out all the time. So um, with those kind of things down, uh, the agent at that organization said, well, University of Tampa sounds like a perfect fit for you. And I kind of jumped on it. So from I started looking into college in the U.S. and until I actually had accepted my my um my uh, invitation to attend the University of Tampa, I, th I think it only took about a month, honestly. It was easier than I thought it would be because, um, well, I, I left, I, I moved out of home when I was about 18 years old to attend the military in Norway. Um, and then I also moved to a couple of other cities in Norway where I, I worked as a journalist for a little while before I ended up coming to the US. So um, coming to new places and being at new places was something that I was kind of accustomed to. Um, but the main part where I really had to even challenge myself a little bit was to adapt to the culture that was here when I first got here. Um, and it took me a while. So a lot of the people that I first started hanging out with and the people that I, I first spent time with was other international students because there's a really big group of international students at the University of Tampa and they do a really good job of integrating people there. Uh, so uh, I first started hanging out with some friends of mine from Brazil and India and and other places in Africa even uh, before I actually became friends with some Americans. Um, so I did tend to 
gravitate more towards the university or the international students before I eventually started hanging out with the Americans. Apart from that, the main support I had was, you know, from home. Um, I, I talked to my, my family at least every other day. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's only four months until you go home. It's four months of the semester and then you're home and then it's four months to the next semester uh, and then you're home for summer. So to me, that transition wasn't as hard as it might be for other people. Um, but as I said, uh, I have some great support at home and I found some great friends and, and uh, yeah, it kind of worked out well for me. As I went through the university or at the, through the sports management degree, I did find that, um, like I mentioned earlier, I had some talents that I wasn't truly aware of. Um, when I was when I went to high school and stuff like that back home in Norway, uh, one of the things I always found pretty easy was mathematics and and, and economics in general. Um, but I never really thought I would uh, be able to do that at the university level as well. So as I went through the sports management degree, because I mean, we have classes that are, we have to do accounting classes, we had to do economics classes, we had to do finance and sports, we had to do all of these business classes as well, that was kind of integrated towards sports as well. And um, it kind of blew me away that, it, like how easy it was to me to some degree even, to do those classes, um, and also in what you can call my second language, basically English. Um, so I started figuring out that, I mean, if I want to get to the place where I want to be in sports maybe at some point, uh, getting an MBA degree would help me a lot, and I did get a lot of support and help from from uh, my professors in the sports management program. That you know they wrote recommendations for me and stuff like that, and it really helped me to get into the program. Uh, but they kind of said, they, they they in their opinion they thought I was a smart guy and they thought that I, I had some leadership qualities. Don't know where that came from, but sure, I'll I'll, I'll trust them. <laughs> um, and with with those you know inputs from those people, and also with. COVID happening and not there's not being a lot of jobs, neither here in the US or in Norway at that point, um, I decided, okay, this is probably the best time or the perfect time for me to actually do my to do my MBA. Um, and with the finance part, it's it mainly is because I love working with numbers and I, I love working with, with data and, and analytics and, and, and kind of using the information I have to find the best possible outcome. And I feel like that is a skill that is transferable from both business and also into the sports world because right now I have to admit I'm a little bit on the fence if I want to work in sports or if I want to work in business because right now I have an experience with the internship program that is more towards business but previously I've worked in sports I've worked for the, the team that I told you about back home in Norway I worked as a journalist uh, so so I have I have more experience from the sporting background but I also have a good good or started to gain some experience in the business world as well. at least from what I've heard about MBA program previously, is that they do a really good job of teaching you the basic first and foremost, so that whenever you you end up in, in classes that could be very challenging, because there are certain classes that are very challenging, if you know the basics and if they can just tell that you have that, you have that work ethic and you have that, that mindset to uh, challenge yourself and become better at whatever it is that you do, they will help you in, in, in whatever way they can really. Um, so I would just say that in my opinion, I think it's very much about how much of the basics they teach you. Um, and also, even though you, you know a lot of the basics, you can you can test out of certain classes. Uh, so I do think that it's, I mean, in my opinion, just going through the, the MBA internship or the MBA program at UT, it really feels like getting an MBA or getting into an MBA program, you shouldn't really have to have work experience. You really should, you know, be at a program that, that wants to invest in you and believes in you and believes that, hey, even though you don't know these things right now, we can teach you, teach you those things. Because, I mean, it's kind of with soccer, I mean, or with football or with American football or basketball, you, they can't teach you to become tall or, or, you know, the strongest person in the world, but they can teach you the fundamentals and the basics and how to, how to succeed. And I think that's a lot of what University of Tampa views as well. Hey, we can't teach you how to become a CEO or how, or, you know, all these things, but we can teach you the basics to get you out into the business world and the professional world. There's a good blend because there's also this, uh, there's also a lot of people or a lot of kids, I can call them actually, who go through this thing at the University of Tampa that they call the four plus one program. And the four plus one program is that they transition you from your undergraduate degree into your master's degree or your MBA degree um, with, 
saying, hey, instead of you having to take all these elective classes during your last semester or during your last year of, of, of undergrad, you rather jump on and take graduate level classes so that you prepare for doing that last year as well of just being a fully master student or a fully graduate student. So there's a good mix of you know those people and then also the people that are doing or the four plus one people, so often younger kids, and then also a little bit of more experienced you know people in their mid twenties and up. Um, and then also, I mean, one of my other best friends is from India and he's about 35, 38 years old. Uh, so there's like there's a very diverse diverse class profile uh, with people from many different cultural backgrounds many different pro professional backgrounds and different experiences. Uh, but they do a really good job of tailoring that experience within that classroom to the individual. And one of the reasons they do that so well is because there's so few people in every class. I don't think I've had a, 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 a one single MBA class that has had more than, I would say, 20 people in the class. So that means that, you know, whoever the teacher or the professor is, they're really able to accommodate you and, and help you in a personal way so that let's say that you know you're um, you're ahead of cer on cer certain stuff then compared to what other people are they can kind of you know help you transition and help you work on maybe even harder problems than than the ones that you were given uh, originally in, in the class they know that a lot of students use their own time to research you know what classes are hard what professors are hard and certain and things like that so um, take me, for example, last semester, I took uh, a marketing class, an economics class, and I took an ITM class, and I also took a management class. I, I did four classes, and I knew that the marketing class and the economics class was going to be a lot of hard work. That's why I also decided to do the ITM class and the management class, because I'd heard that it wasn't as much work in those. So they kind of let you choose, pick and choose based on what kind of what kind of run you want to go through with the MBA program. Um, uh, to to tailor it to whatever needs you have and also if there's like let's say that you have um, certain responsibilities outside of class they they tailor it to make sure that you know if you have a if you have a if you have a kid or if you have you know family here in tampa or you have someone close to you that needs that needs you to needs your attention um they tell you okay you can choose between all these classes you don't have to do all of them right now but you can do some of them right now uh, so what I have experienced is that I will see some of the same faces in every class, uh, but there's also going to be a turnover in people. So you get, uh, which is a good thing because I end up having to work with new teammates, work with new people, and, and, and things like that, which is a, which is a, a really strength of the program. Because I mean, as a leader, as a, developing as a manager and a leader, you know, uh, tackling those situations of getting to know new people and 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 leading new people and working with new people is a, is a good one. So like I said, yeah, just a can get a lot of different people in the class based on what classes you're taking. I would say at least close to 75 to 80 percent of the of, of of the classes at UT for the MBA program you have to take because they have something they call the MBA basic, which is kind of the basic level uh, economics, accounting, finance, management, and statistics. And then after that, you kind of jump into what we call the core, uh, the MBA core, which is focused on, which is, I mean, it's still, it's kind of just advanced level classes within those same, same, same spheres. So, you know, finance and accounting and marketing and so on within there as well. And then after that, a lot of people can choose to, they, they, if you only do a general MBA, you have to take two electives. That means you can choose two classes. I mean, that could be management, it could be, finance, economics, whatever you want to do with that as well. Uh, or uh, you you focus in on concentrations and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing my, my concentration in finance. So that means that after I'm done with the basic and the core of the MBA, I'm doing the elective of the MBA or the concentration of the MBA. Um, and I have to take one decision analysis elective and then three finance classes on top of that afterwards. But I have also been able to, there are certain things you can trick and, and kind of tailor a little bit to yourself. So what I've been able to do is I've been able to take, instead of doing four um, finance classes, I'm only doing three because one of the classes I'm doing counts as both an elective class and also the concentration class. So I would say, like I said, I'm doing four classes that are kind of on my own terms. Um, so I would say about, yeah, around 70, 75% of, of, of the classes that UT for MBA program 
you have to uh, are set for you. But you can take them at whatever point you like. You can take them in the fall, in the spring, in the summer, whatever it is. But uh, you just have to take them at some point, and then after that, you move on to the elective classes at some point later on. I'm doing my MBA in two years instead. I could have probably finished it in one and a half, but I ended up doing it in two to not get too much of a workload. Um, so the time frame of it is very open. Um, the only thing that they, they, they kind of set to some degree constraints on you is that they're saying in order for you to move on to the next level, so in order for you to move on from the basic level classes to the core level classes, you have to finish, let's say you want to do the finance uh, what we have uh, called, called Finance 611, which is Advanced Finance. If you want to take that class, you got to first have taken Finance 500, which is the basic finance class. So that's really the only constraint they set on you in terms of a time frame and in terms of you taking it either in the, in the spring, in the summer, in the fall. That's completely up to you. Up until the summer, um, a lot of the classes were either completely online or they were hybrid because of COVID, of course. Uh, but now from fall or from, I think some people, the people at summer classes, it's moved to a fully in-person class experience again. Um, and most of the classes I've taken, at least the basic level classes, or take that all the way around, the basic level classes that I took, they were more the day during daytime so the 500 level classes they were more during daytime when i move on to the advanced classes so the 600 level classes those have been more i, th I feel like they've been more um in the evening actually or late afternoon at least and i do think that's because um a lot of people while they do the mba they also have jobs or or, or things like that so the ut i think ut i've heard i've gotten some feedback from people saying hey we would rather like having classes in the evening or late afternoon because we got work earlier when we have moved on from those basic level classes. Uh, but a, a different, a really good thing about it too is that um, most classes have two different choices. You can choose between at least two different times. So, uh, for example, my economic class last semester had uh, one instance from uh, two to four on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Or I could have taken a class from six to 10 on just a Tuesday. Um, so I could either choose having taken it, just knock it out in one day for the whole week or split it up and do it over two over two days in the week. Um, so um, as I said, it's, it's flexible um, and it's nothing that's really too rigid around. That depends a little bit on, on on the academic profile you have when you when you enter the class because if you come from a business school an accredited business school and you got B's or better in all of the basic classes so you know all the economic classes finance classes accounting classes all those things that you took at the undergrad level you go in and you get those classes the basic level classes waived because they're essentially the same classes so that means that uh, with that you only have to do afterwards you probably will only have to do the core part of the MBA and then also the advanced or the concentration part or the yeah a part of the MBA. So I do think that uh, in my opinion it is absolutely possible to finish it in a year if you put on a little bit of a heavy workload uh, if you have those things taken care of already the basic classes. Uh, I also do think that you could also pretty easily in my opinion do it in a year and a half so that would say let's say if you do fall term then spring term and then a couple of classes in the summer definitely you could finish that within that time frame and even look even for me um, i only got waived two classes from the sports management program which was my basic level accounting and economics because i took that i had to take the basic level finance statistics marketing and management um, but for me i like i said i could probably have finished the the program in a year and a half even with those basic level classes needing to be taken as well uh, but I decided to do it in two years. So um, it depends on your academic profile. If you come in without too heavy of an academic profile, I would say it's more than possible to finish it in two years, maybe even one and a half. Uh, but if you have that background that I talked about, then it shouldn't be a problem to finish it in a year, honestly. The way they set up the school fees is that you pay for every credit you take. 
and um, the full-time MBA program is basically between 8 and 12 credits. And right now, I think one credit costs about 650 or $660. So for me, um, right now, I am doing 14 credits in the upcoming fall semester because uh, I want to have as few credits left due in my final semester. So I'm only going to take eight credits in the final semester before I graduate. Uh, so in the fall, I'm doing 14 and it's going to cost me a little bit north of $9,000. So uh, to me, it's, it's it's cheaper than the undergrad program that I took. Um, and it's actually one of the most affordable and better MBAs you can take out there, the, 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 the University of Tampa MBA. So um, it's not bad at all. And that's including the student health care or health insurance fee. And then also uh, one other fee that, you know, they just take as, as a part of you attending the University of Tampa. So as I said, it's not it's not uh, too much of a financial commitment in my opinion, at least for what you get back from it afterwards. The MBA program can be, of course, very challenging, and and I went into it thinking that, you know, as long as I just keep myself over that 3.0 GPA that I have to in order to stay in the program, I'll be fine. But I've kind of surprised myself with, you know. I've, I've been achieving A's in most of my classes. I have a couple of B's here and there, which hasn't been, I mean, it's not too bad. But what I really found important to me to help me make sure that I achieve those grades and achieve the best experience I can do both academically and also personally while I've been here is that um, work-school balance, I call it, because you have something we call a work-life balance, but it's very important to have that work-school balance. So when I, when I, if anybody that ever wants to go to any, you, MBA program in, in the US or wherever in the world, I would say pick, pick a program first off that, that fits you, but also pick a place, a city that you think that you will actually have fun in and that you're actually going to enjoy. Because that when you're done with school, I mean, school's going to take what, 15 to 20 hours a week. What are you going to do for those other hours that you're, that, that, that you have to spend time with friends or yourself? I mean, that, that's really where the important part is to make sure that you're you're in an environment and you're in a city and you're with people that you actually enjoy being around. So the academics, if you're a smart person and you work hard, the academics are going to be, you're going to get through it. I can promise you that. It's not that hard. Uh, it's not rocket science. <laughs> but what is, what is harder is going through these experiences alone, uh, going through this experience in an environment that you don't fit in, in or an environment that you don't enjoy. So pick a program, pick a city, that you feel like, hey, this is gonna be a cool experience.